I've known Gordon for probably about seven years now, for a long time. Uh, the first time I trained with him, he was like a really tough purple belt, and I was extremely impressed. I'm like, wow, he's good. I didn't realize he was going to be the level he was at, but I realized he was going to be really good. And then about a year later, you know, I came back and trained with him, and his his progress was just so massive in a year. I'm like, wow, this kid is uh, this kid's going to be a, you know going to be the best. And then within a year past that, he was you know pretty much the best in the world, or the best two or three in the world. And then after that, he's been at least five five six years been number one in the world. Yeah, the whole team is just phenomenal here. John Donna here is probably you know the best jiu-jitsu coach in the world, great MMA coach as well. The team is just so solid. It's uh, it's also a great training environment. So you have so many good teammates, but everyone's no one's trying to hurt each other. People are open-minded. They're they're letting they're letting you work. So it's not like everyone's super competitive trying to beat each other, but they're also trying to learn from each other. And when you have a room like that, you can just explode and everyone can progress together. Yeah, Taza and uh, Big Dan are also phenomenal. You know, I've known them for a long time as well. Not quite as long as Gordon, but, you know, met them a couple years later. And they're also two of the top people. Taza's been on the scene for a while, terrorizing. He's been the top two or three in the world for a while. And Big Dan's kind of, uh, he's still super young, so he's new on the scene. But he's, uh, I think he's going to be one of the big stars. He's starting to win the big shows. He did Abu Dhabi this year. And I think we're going to see big things from him. Uh, key words, I mean, just for, for Gordon, just, you know, the, the greatest, cur currently the greatest and the greatest is all, all time. And, you know, Taza is just vicious, tough, tenacious. And Big Dan, like you said, he, he's still young, but, you know, he's got unlimited potential. I see him within a couple of years being one, one of the greatest, if not the best in the world. Gordon Ryan, uh, let's start for, for him. So probably everybody knows about him. Uh, his style is pretty uh, uh, precise in every single position. The uh, pressure on the top, like, super fancy game in the bottom position, like working legs, working sweeps and submissions, triangles and etc. So this is basically what he does and this is why he's the best on the planet. Taza has a super, uh, I would say like fancy game when he's uh, working on escapes and like scram scram scrambles and uh, any kind of situation where he's like moving uh, a lot to find some good opportunity to like pin somebody uh, in positions and this is what makes his game so exciting to watch. And Big Dan is a uh, upcoming fighter. He's pretty talented, he's like huge, he's almost 300 pounds, so he's super strong. And he has some super solid game doing uh, uh, simple stuff and also leg lock game. So this is pretty much what Dan does. And the three guys are incredible competitors. Gordon Ryan, of course, by far the best one. But Taz and, and Big Dan are like, super uh, 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 ready to give a show to everybody. Hi, my name is Daniel Montessori. I'm 21 years old. I'm a purple belt out of New Wave Jiu Jitsu. Yeah, so my opponent for the UFC Fight Pass Invitational is going to be Ricardo Evangelista. He's a very seasoned black belt. He's competed against the best. He has so much tournament experience. Um, I have nothing but respect for him. I think he's very good in the gi, but I think he's going to be struggling. No gi. I don't really see any place where he poses a problem for me. No gi. I don't think that he can out-wrestle me. I don't think he could pass my guard. And I don't think he would be able to retain guard against me. Um, I feel like I'm better than him everywhere as long as it's no gi. So, uh, but I still think he's tough. I think that the one thing that he brings against me into this match is much more tournament experience. He's much older than me. He's been in the game much longer. But I have a very good teacher and I train so hard for this. I don't want to lose no more. I feel great. I'm the healthiest I've ever been. Uh, I was plagued with a couple of injuries, a knee surgery, which set me back for a little bit. But um, it's the Fight Pass Invitational is one year after I had my knee surgery, where uh, I had severe COVID, lost 30 pounds, uh, ended up with a very, very bad situation with my knee, uh, a surgery that was supposed to take me out for two to four weeks, actually it was supposed to take me out for eight months. I went into the West Coast Trials with one month of training. I got second place. Uh, I lost by a penalty because I decided to be stupid at the end of the match. And then I went on to the European Trials. I won in a dominant fashion and I competed in the Olympics of Jiu Jitsu. And the timing for this couldn't be better because exactly one year ago, 
I was in a hospital, unable to walk, unable to move. I had to ask somebody to help me use the bathroom, and now I'm competing for the UFC, so it couldn't be anything better. I went from the lowest lows to the highest highs. Uh, I unfortunately lost in the last 30 seconds of the competition, but I learned a lot from competing in ADCC. I couldn't be competing at a higher level. I couldn't be competing against a better guy. And I felt like I belonged. And I'm so young that I feel like I have at least 10 more ADCCs in my life. And I guarantee you, I'm gonna win one of them. Training with John, the one thing, everybody tries to say, oh, it's fancy technique. Oh, it's fancy this. All the techniques that he shows are public. He sells them all on the DVDs. Everybody knows the stuff that we do. But in reality, the thing which I think sets us apart more than anything else is the discipline. And it all comes from our teacher. Our instructor is the most disciplined guy I've ever met in my life. There will not be a time where he's not teaching, even if he's in pain, even if it doesn't feel good that day. You can count that John's gonna be there teaching class unless he has arrangements where he has to travel or do something. The discipline that's in this room is unbelievable. And the lack of discipline is unacceptable. <laughs> Everybody in this room works very, very hard. We're trying, all of us are trying our best to master our craft. And that's the thing which I think separates training with the New Wave team and with John Danaher more than the other teams. I don't believe it's a technique, but I believe it's a discipline combined with top tier technique. Yeah, at Rolling with Gordon, if there was a perfection of physicality and technique, it would be Gordon. And he is an amazing role model that we should, we're all striving to be just as good as. There's nothing better than having a Gordon Ryan in the room. My name is John Danaher. I'm the head coach of New Wave Jiu Jitsu. Vinny Maglaish is one of the greatest grapplers of his generation. He was ADCC champion. Uh, he's fought very successfully in both mixed martial arts uh, and grappling. Um, he has an absolutely outstanding record in three of the major areas of jiu-jitsu. He's very good with the gi, very good without the gi, and very good in mixed martial arts. Um, uh, he rose to the absolute top of no gi jiu-jitsu by winning his gold medal at ADCC. Um, he has a very unique form of game. He's a heavyweight, but he has the flexibility and speed that you normally associate with lightweights. So physically, he's a very gifted uh, athlete. Uh, he has a, a very, very interesting game. He has strong takedowns by jiu-jitsu standards, uh, courtesy of his mixed martial arts background. Uh, but at the same time, he fights extremely well off his back. So he's unusual. Most people who are strong in takedowns tend to favor top position. Then he has good takedowns, but is extremely good working from bottom position. Gordon is uh, known for a powerful top game, but Vinny is known for a very tactical and proficient bottom game. So they're an interesting matchup in this regard. Gordon is known for very powerful leg locks, but Vinny is known for very powerful leg lock defense. Um, uh, Gordon is known uh, for his ability to play uh, uh, a very suffocating standing game based around grip fighting and wearing people down over time until he can take them down. But Vinny is very proficient in the standing position. So there's a sense in which these two athletes are oddly matched against each other. The strengths of one tend to negate the strengths of the other. Um, they have fought once in the past and most of the match they negated each other. But Vinny was able to score early in the match and win uh, a victory. One of the, the very few people who has a, a genuine win over Gordon Ryan. Um, and you could see in that match, in that match the, the sense in which their games tend to conflict with each other. Uh, but both of them have changed a lot. Vinny's a lot bigger than he was the, the, the last time they, they, they were matched against each other. And Gordon has gone on uh, several orders of magnitude above in terms of jiu-jitsu accomplishments since the last time they, they fought each other. So it'll be fascinating to watch the degree to which the, uh, these two athletes who a while ago used to negate each other to a great degree, will they now surpass each other in those various aspects in which they used to clash? When Gordon and Vinny first fought each other, Gordon was mostly known as a lower body submission artist. He still has that, he proved it at the recent World Championships, but he's expanded massively into formidable upper body submissions, 
one of the most powerful pinning games in the history of Jiu Jitsu, almost unstoppable guard passing, and very, very effective hand fighting on the feet, working his way into dominant position on the feet where he enacts foot trip takedowns. Those areas he almost completely lacked the first time that uh, he took on Vinny, uh, and now they've become a big, big source of strength in his game. The UFC has been at the foremost uh, elements of combat sports for well over 30 years now. Um, there's a sense in which uh, the prestige and the branding of the UFC has uh, surpassed almost every other aspect of combat sports. They've blown past boxing, past kickboxing. They've outlasted every other mixed martial arts organization, uh, even the biggest ones from times gone by. Um, they are unquestionably the single greatest powerhouse in combat sports today. Uh, grappling has always been a sport which has a strong grassroots following amongst the people who, who, uh, who live by it and who, who practice it. But it's never come out as a spectator sport. Um, it might be due to the nature of the sport itself, but I suspect if anyone's gonna make grappling into a spectator sport, it'll be the UFC. I knew Gordon Ryan would be a stellar jiu-jitsu athlete pretty early on. Even as uh, a young purple and brown belt in the gym, he was regularly submitting black belt world champions in, in ways that suggested it wasn't just luck. It was happening often and it was happening by design. Um, when you see that kind of prodigious talent in the gym, the only question is, can they manifest it on a stage in front of an audience? And Gordon Ryan always had a, a precocious personality. He loves the limelight. He loves, uh, he, liked, he, he enjoys the bright lights of competition. And when you have that kind of talent from the gym, that kind of technical prowess, combined with the, the confidence of someone who enjoys the limelight, enjoys the spotlight, loves to hear his name called out, in the, in the competitive setting, uh, you know you've got something special on your hands.